So today I'm going to be doing a deep dive on Leviticus chapter 13. The Lord put it on my heart to read Exodus, Leviticus, and um, Numbers. Now I'm on Leviticus and I recently just read Leviticus chapter 13. Now for those of you who read the, um, the Bible for yourselves, you know that Leviticus is basically filled with a bunch of laws that God gave the Israelites as they were walking through the wilderness after he delivered them from Egypt. I'm, a, I'm not going to lie to you guys, like me personally like i skip past this chapter anytime i'm reading the old testament because like for me it's just like a bunch of it's kind of like genesis like genesis goes through the whole genealogy and so you kind of like skip past that because you think like hey i mean i really don't need to know like who begot who and all that to get to you know the core lesson the lord was like really convicting me when i had these thoughts or even if i did skip even a verse i would feel such conviction and I think the Lord was just telling me like, no, like you need to read every single word of this chapter because there is some deep spiritual things, spiritual lessons that you can interpret from Leviticus, even though it's just basically God giving all his laws to the Israelites. I was reading Leviticus chapter 13, not really getting it in the beginning. And just to give you some context on what Leviticus chapter 13 is about. So Leviticus 13 is basically like detailed instructions on how the Israelites were to handle cases of infections or skin diseases. God was very detailed about how these skin diseases looked, what you need to do in those circumstances when you suspect that you have a skin disease and how you can be cleansed, as he says in the chapter. This chapter really hones in on leprosy, which we hear about leprosy in the Bible a lot in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And um, leprosy is actually still going on today. That is still a skin disease that is uh, current today. These laws were given to Moses and Aaron. Aaron at this time was appointed high priest along with his sons. His sons were appointed to be priests, but Aaron was appointed to be the high priest. It basically Leviticus out outlines like the role that the priest had in examining these people who had skin diseases and it also God also gave the priest instructions on how they were to examine them and what they were to do once it has been declared that they have been unclean I'm going to basically be reading Leviticus chapter 13 verses 1 through 7 I encourage you guys to read the chapter in its full totality for yourselves because truly you guys like I was shocked with the revelations that God gave me from this chapter from face value just like oh my god it's just pun intended oh my god like this is just all laws like why do i need to know this but really y'all like these laws and like just the overall lesson embedded in these laws can actually really help you in your walk today and i hope that it blesses you as much as it has blessed me when i when god gave me these revelations i'm just going to give you a little some background knowledge that i believe that you need to know in order to understand the overall lesson so at this point in leviticus chapter 13 it has been a year since the um, god has delivered the israelites from slavery in egypt they have recently just completed the tabernacle all like the the later half of exodus god gave very specific details on how they were to construct this tabernacle and you know he was very he honed it into moses to make sure that moses built the tabernacle as the lord commanded you'll see that a lot in that chapter as the lord commanded it's been a year since god delivered them um, they are camped out at the base of Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and the rest of the laws of the Old Testament. He gave like specifics like they Moses would go up Mount Sinai to have communion and conversation with God and the Israelites were not allowed to go up there with him. Moses was the chosen one to go up there with him. Occasionally he would take Joshua and I think he took Aaron up there once, but only because God allowed him to do so. But this was a very private space. This is where God manifested himself to the Israelites um, visually with fire and clouds and thunder. That is called um, theophany. Theophany is basically what, like when God had um, manifests himself to you. You can have a theophany moment to this day. It is possible when God manifests himself to you and maybe you've already had it, you just didn't have the word for it. You're probably asking, why is he giving them the laws? The Israelites, um, they were learning what it meant to live under God's law. 
at this moment. You have to realize they just, they were living for over 400 years under the laws of Egypt, of the Egyptian um, king of the Pharaoh. So this is all new to them, even though they are Israelites and they knew of God, they, they had a history with God, you know, beforehand with, you know, Isaac, Jacob and his sons and everything. So this is not like brand smack new. This is the first time that they were not pressured under Pharaoh's law, but they were now under God's law. It's been so many generations from Jacob and his sons and Joseph that at this point they, you know, weren't really rooted um, in God's law in God's presence um, as much as Jacob and his sons and his descendants because again this is like 400 years later God was just basically telling them how they should worship how they should approach him just basically give them the law of the land before they reach the promised land this chapter hones in on the laws about skin diseases and other forms of uncleanness. This was to prevent the disease from spreading throughout the community. The numbers dwindled, but I do believe that Moses took a good 600,000 people from Egypt. Throughout the time of Exodus, some people did die off. Some people were killed, so that number has dwindled, but that's still a lot of people. And so this was to keep, these laws were not only to keep the disease from spreading, but there's also a symbolic message here about holiness, sin, and the need to be pure before you approach God. Lesson number one, spiritual cleanliness and holiness. I mentioned before that this chapter really talks about leprosy. Leprosy is often seen as a metaphor for sin. It starts off small, but it spreads and it causes severe damage if it is left unchecked. You know, Jesus really honed, on, honed in on leprosy and how it's a metaphor for sin. So just like how leprosy starts off small, and if you don't go seek help or get some type of medication, or you know, in, in their time, they probably had like these bombs and stuff that they made from plants. If you didn't go get that immediately and you just let it spread and fester, it can cause severe damage. And that's what sin is. Sin starts off really small, like a little seed, and then it grows if you don't, if you leave it unchecked. Just as the Israelites were called to keep themselves physically clean and pure, we are called to keep ourselves spiritually clean and pure and to seek cleansing and to pursue holiness before God. So first step in this is that you need to check yourself and acknowledge that you have a weird looking growth on your skin, okay? I am going to read Leviticus chapter 13, verses one and two to really hone in on this fact, on this first step. This is the ERV, which is the easy to read version. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, someone might have a swelling on their skin or it may be a rash or a bright spot. If the sore looks like the disease of leprosy, the person must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons, the priest. Like I said, the first step is to acknowledge and realize that you have a weird looking spot on your skin. You have an abnormality on your skin, okay? Just like how the Israelites had indications of when they had leprosy, physical indications, we also have spiritual indications of when sin has basically placed itself within us it might be that you feel conviction a lot of conviction you might feel guilt you might feel shame we have this inner conscience and i believe that's the holy spirit that tells us when we have done something wrong either you know what you did wrong or you didn't know what you did wrong but then you feel you feel the after effects you feel the holy spirit really tugging at you knocking at the door like hey you did something wrong we have spiritual indications just like how they have visual the second step is that that you must be brought before the priest or the high priest. So I am going to read verse number two again. Someone might have a swelling on their skin or it may be a rash or a bright spot. If the sore looks like the disease of leprosy, the person must be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of his sons, the priest. Aaron was appointed high priest along with his sons as like his subordinates, but they were also priests. And this would be a generational thing for Aaron and his descendants. Anytime the people would notice like a skin disease, 
um, or what appears to be a skin disease, like on this on their skin, they were they must, and this is a must. This is not an if and or but. They must be brought before Aaron. Um, so they can be examined instead of Aaron and his descendants being the priest Jesus became our ultimate priest our high priest if you have those spiritual indications that sin has crept up on your skin or into your heart you must be brought before Jesus he is our high priest just like how they had to be brought before Aaron you have to be brought before Jesus what would Jesus do Jesus will tell you if you have leprosy I'm going to read um, verse 3. The priest must look at the sore on the person's skin. If the hair in the sore has become white, and if the sore seems deeper than the person's skin, it is leprosy. When the priest has finished looking at the person, he must announce that the person is unclean. So from this verse, we see that the priest is the only person who can discern, determine if it is leprosy or not. They are the only ones who can look at all the symptoms in the signs that you are coming to them with and Aaron made the final decision if you were clean or unclean or if you had leprosy or just something else and it's the same way with Jesus he can see our condition and he can give us our diagnosis I want to pause and just talk about holiness I didn't really understand the difference between righteousness and holiness and to be honest I didn't really understand what righteousness and holiness really meant in the Bible in Leviticus and also in Exodus and throughout the Old Testament and New Testament God says this statement a lot I'm gonna read it out you shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. God chose the Israelites to be his chosen people, to be set apart. He wanted the Israelites to know that because I have chosen you to be my people and that you must be set apart, that you must be holy because I am holy. This is an article that was written on GodQuestions.org that really just tells you what the difference between righteousness and holiness is. So righteousness and holiness are two words that describe states of moral excellence. There is a slight difference between these two concepts. So righteousness is the condition of being proven or declared morally excellent, while holiness is the condition of being consecrated or dedicated to moral excellence. And here's an example if that was just like too much of a word dump for you. So think of it this way. Hold on. There's an ad in front of this thing. I can't see a thing. Okay. Let me read that over again. Sorry. A ballerina who dances for the New York City Ballet has been declared good enough to be a part of that company. From a young age, she has set herself apart to that purpose, to honing her skills, and she continues to practice and improve as she dances. In this analogy, righteousness is the ballerina's position in the ballet company. She has been given a position, her talents have been approved, and she belongs to the company. Holiness is the ballerina's dedication and devotion to her art. Everything in her life, what she eats, whom she knows, how she spends her time and money bows to this purpose. We are declared righteous by God through Jesus's death on the cross, but also through our faith in Jesus. And so we have been proven by God as righteous as long as we have faith in his son, Jesus. Holiness is basically now that we know that we are made righteous, that we have been proven to be righteous. Everything in our life, what we eat, who we know who we interact with how we act that is holiness we are being set apart consecrated dedicated to God's purpose and so that is kind of how I understand it again I think if you're still struggling with these two concepts you should read the full article because it goes more into detail but that's just how I understand it this is why God was being so strict and so um particular with his law especially in this in this chapter about his law about being clean he wanted the israelites to know when they are unclean because you cannot be unclean in the presence of god because he is holy holiness and sin cannot exist in the same space and so god wanted that connection he wanted their relationships in the with the israelites he was very um he's been, he was very gracious by giving them not only a detailed description of how it looks to be unclean but also how to get clean so i just wanted to touch on that for a second lesson two healing and restoration the chapter like i said outlines the specific process that one had to to go through to be restored into community once they were healed once it was declared that you had leprosy or a rash you were either deemed clean or unclean and if you were deemed unclean god went on to further explain how you can be restored 
back to cleanliness. This just teaches us that God has a desire for us to be restored and for us to be clean and holy and set apart. He is very gracious and he wants that connection. He wants you back into the fold. We face isolation. We face brokenness, we face sin, but God always provides a way for healing, restoration, and reconciliation with him and with other people. And this is just his grace. This is his community of grace. So to be honest, the process of restoration should be celebrated. It should not be shunned because it's just, you, God's grace is just showing in that moment through your process of restoration and healing. You're probably asking like, what if I don't have leprosy? but I just have a rash. I'm gonna read verses four and six. Sometimes there is a white spot on a person's skin that does not seem deeper than the skin. If that is true, the priest must separate that person from other people for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must look at the person again. If the priest sees that the sore has not changed and has not spread on the skin, he must separate the person for seven more days days seven days later the priest must look at the person again if the sore has faded and has not spread on the skin the priest must announce that the person is clean the sore is only a rash after washing the clothes that person will be clean again in this case it wasn't leprosy it was just a rash but still that is still a skin abnormality you still need to come to god and you still need that diagnosis that it's a rash and there's even a process for a rash you see he separated that person for seven days so that they, that rash can heal and then he came back and checked again and he saw okay so it didn't heal but it also didn't spread so we know it's not leprosy but the rash is still there you need to be separated for another seven days so don't be fooled and thinking that you can just live with this rash no that rash needs to be gone you need to be separated so in this case in today's time separation you need to go into you need to be separated from whatever has caused the rash rashes are caused by irritants by allergic reactions you, some you something went wrong okay some you probably you probably know what's, what went wrong or you probably don't know and this, this rash just popped up this sin just popped up but in either case come before jesus so that he can give you your diagnosis so you can be become aware of what you have within you and you need to separate yourself from whatever has caused that sin to stir up this separation can last a long time it can last more than seven days in this case it was seven days but in today's time it could last your separation could last 40 days it could last two two months uh, i think that is 40 days i can't count it can last a whole year. And so that is what you do if you don't have leprosy, but you have a rash. And another thing is that a rash can potentially become leprosy. Like some people are fooled that, okay, I can live with this rash, but then you went so long without separating yourself. Okay, rash is sin at this point. So just remember that. But you say, I'll have this sin. I can live with this sin. But then that sin then develops into leprosy because you left it unchecked. I'm going to read verse seven to just really hone in. But if the rash sin spreads over the skin after the person has shown himself to the priest to be made clean again, that person must come again to the priest. The priest must look. And if the rash is spread, he must announce that the person is unclean. The disease is leprosy. So a rash can become leprosy if you believe that you can just live with it, not go to your separation and start the healing process. I'm reading about the definition of a rash. Rash is sin. Remember that. A rash can heal through a natural process as the body works to repair and regenerate the effect skin the healing time depends on the cause of the rash the severity and how well it is treated so in the case if we switch rash for the word sin sin can heal through the process of jesus <laughs> you know how he repairs and generates regenerates your you and so the healing time depends on the cause of the sin the severity of the sin and how well you treat the sin you can't just be in like a partial separation like uh, every once in a while i read the bible every once in a while i pray every once in a while i acknowledge that, that jesus is here no how well you treat that sin is how long you will sit in that separation this is what happens if you this is what happens with rashes this is how you identify the cause many rashes are cured due to allergic reactions, irritants, infections, or underlying condition. Healing begins when the trigger, meaning whatever caused the rash, is removed or treated. So you need to remove whatever caused that sin. You need to treat the sin and separate yourself from whatever caused it. And you can only really know that if you come before Jesus and he'll tell you, this is what caused this. If the rash is caused by something external, like a chemical irritant or allergen, 
avoiding further contact with the substance helps the skin begin to recover again this is just honing in that you need to separate yourself from whatever caused that sin to fester it could be a person it could be a situation it could be you, yourself who knows what it could be you can only know if you go to jesus and he'll be honest and reveal that to you because we can be fooled on what the source of the uh the rash was this leads me to the third lesson you need to have patience and obedience those diagnosed with skin diseases in leviticus had to go long periods of waiting examination and potential quarantine this reminds us that we need patience in seasons of healing and seasons of difficulty whether it's dealing with the illness or waiting for healing or navigating spiritual um struggles there is value in trusting in god's timing and his process with this that he has set in place for our well-being you have to keep coming back you see in verse 7 that even after that person was declared clean because it was just a rash they had to come back because they saw that the rash started to spread and i believe it's the same with sin today you have to keep checking in with god even the smallest feeling of sin if you don't be like i thought it, it was this a sin like was i in the wrong like any nothing is too small for god to evaluate and nothing is too small for god for you to come to god for you have to keep coming back don't be thinking that you are saved oh i've been de declared clean so now i don't need to come back again no keep coming back to jesus it's kind of like with the doctor's office you don't just go once and then never go to a doctor again we must keep coming back to the ultimate superior physician which is jesus to check in on our state this leads me to the ultimate lesson lesson number four jesus is our high priest so like i stated in leviticus 13 priests were tasked with diagnosing and managing skin diseases in the community priests in Leviticus acted as the ones to assess and guide the people regarding illnesses all throughout leviticus there are various degrees and symptoms of skin disease and the priests were the only ones to declare if it was leprosy or not you need to read leviticus chapter 13 for yourself there are some cases where the skin disease was all over the body then could be uh, you could be sinning in various parts of your life you could be sinning on just one part of your life um there was a part um talked about you know there's a skin there's like a bright spot on the scalp i mean so we can see that there's various degrees of sin and there's various um, symptoms of sin. Priests were the only ones to declare if it was leprosy or not. The main question is, what if I had leprosy? What if it was declared that I had leprosy, that I was a leper and I was unclean? In the biblical times of the Old Testament, you if you were declared to be a leper, a person with leprosy, you were excluded from, from worship. You were socially isolated from your community. You were actually camped out outside of the main camp. You could not participate in any religious ceremonies, any um, purification ceremonies, any feasts, any communal gatherings. I mean, leprosy was, sin, was, was seen as like a physical ailment, but you got to remember leprosy is a metaphor for sin so you were spiritually impure you were sinful this led from alienation from your family and friends you probably experienced shame because people looking at you strange you had like i said you had to live outside of your community so you probably didn't have access to the basic they didn't have access to the basic necessities of just general life it didn't end there it depends on how well you treat the, the sin like i said how well you treat the leprosy or the sin is how long it takes for you to get clean again if the person's condition healed was healed at that time they thought it was a miraculous act of god in today's time we know that we can get healed through jesus when somebody was um declared to have leprosy they were excluded and they could be excluded indefinitely if they did nothing about it if you didn't go through the process of trying to be clean again if you didn't separate or remove whatever caused the rash or the leprosy in the first place you could end up in a situation where you you are completely isolated separated from god separated from your community feeling this shame feeling this um this social isolation for the rest of your life because you're doing nothing about it you're you're letting it go untreated those who 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 identify that they are unclean and that they take the steps and th those steps are li listed out in leviticus 14 but in today's time the steps are to just come before jesus have him diagnose you in the first place god will t tell you the steps you need to do in order to get clean again and 
those steps are listed in the Bible. You need to pray for forgiveness and you just need to make sure that you that you walk in holiness and that you're set apart and that you just do better. That's kind of what happens after you were declared to have leprosy. But overall, the general lesson is that being declared a leper meant enduring significant physical, social, and religious consequences, including isolation from the community and separation from worship. However, the law also provided a way for healing and restoration, symbolizing the possibility of being made clean and re-entering a right relationship with God and his people. Leprosy thus not only represented physical illness, but also served as a powerful metaphor for sin, impurity, and the need for divine cleansing. If you got a rash, if you have leprosy, you need to check in with Jesus, have him examine you, have him give you your diagnosis, and then you need to trust in God, trust in his timing, and follow his commands so that you can be declared clean again and then re-enter into his presence re-enter into relationship with him this was actually shocking to just like this this chapter literally just lists out laws and i got this revelation i was like shocked the word once you get a word from god it's not only just for other people but it's also first and foremost it's for you and so this was this really blessed me i hope it blesses you At this point if you were just here for the bible study you can click off i really hope you stay because i'm going to explain why this is not a disciple's episode like it's supposed to be for those of you who don't know i started a series on the 12 disciples where i do deep dives and i do an episode for all 12 of them and i was going to post these every friday this week i was supposed to do a video on matthew let's just say it did not go well it was poor planning on my part but also i just didn't feel right like i actually did record it like i had the recording i was in the process of editing it and a lot of stuff just happened that just showed me that this was not ready to be published one is like my inner conscience like the holy spirit was telling me this is not up to par with the other videos you've done thus far this is not share the message that i'm trying to share to my people this is not it this is not giving this is not it i decided not to post it he was really he was really saying like no girl you is not about to release this Footage. this is trash like this is not it it's not giving i'm going to be obedient to the lord i wanted to be consistent because consistency is a problem for me on this youtube channel one thing is that i'm not really consistent so i i made it my mission to be consistent with this series so i wanted to post one video every friday fortunately it's just not going to happen but i'm not upset it's because i feel very confident that i am obeying god god placed it on my heart to do this series and i'm going to do it as the lord commanded as he did with moses and the israelites in exodus when he told them how to build his tabernacle how to build the place where he was going to be present they had to do it exactly as he commanded to every fine detail god was very specific about how this tabernacle was going to be created and i feel like it's the same thing with this disciple series i am going to do it as the lord commanded and if it's not as the lord commanded if he is not satisfied with the work that i have created then it's not going to be published and so that is why you are not seeing a video about the disciple matthew this week make sure that you hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so that you do not miss out on these episodes and let me know in the comment section if you want me to do more videos like this where i just take a chapter and i just basically tell you what god has revealed to me during my own study time but i really enjoyed this episode i hope it blessed you as it blessed me see you guys all next week I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to post the Matthew and Thomas video because, again, I am working on God's timing, not my own. Thank you for sticking around. Hit that like button. Share this video if you feel like it can bless somebody else. And peace.